It's 5.30 in the morning and we're walking up to the lake. It's super tiring, really tiring. We just woke up now and we saw the one of the most beautiful view of that mountain. It's amazing, it's literally... We were feeling as if we are living in this dream world, completely cut off from what's going on outside in the real world. So here's the thing. Day one we started Bokra. We got this bus which dropped us to this place called Besi Sahar. And from Besi Sahar we took this crazy jeep which took us to this one of the most dangerous roads I've ever been to. And the jeep dropped us right in front of this waterfall. We crossed it somehow and then we walked until this village called Tal. Next morning we packed our bags and we did this 9 hour walk until Chame. We came across many waterfalls, some really cool villages and lots and lots of nature. And we ended up in Chame on day 2. Our walk on day 3 was until Upper Pisang. The walks were just getting so beautiful as we progressed through the circuit. Pisang is a really cool village which is located right next to this beautiful Annapurna Toon mountain. And on the other side there's this cool monastery. And now here we are at day 4. Just started our day four hike. We've got six hours to walk, and I think we'll take two more hours for break. So, in total, eight hours. But yeah, the weather's good. The sun's cleared out early morning. So, now it was day four, and we literally had the best morning so far. I mean, the views were insane, and we got our breakfast served on the rooftop. It was just like as I said, it was just like a dream world, you know? So we're walking on this part of the terrain which is super dry, like very different from what we had yesterday. And we're feeling good, just had a short break and now we've got one more hour for our lunch break. So I think 11 o'clock and I think the weather is going to be clear for the whole day so we're lucky with that. Look at our whole team, everybody's feeling good. So the reason why everybody was feeling okay was because they were taking like these small small breaks every time so there would be like a pre-lunch break there would be a post-lunch break and that was the main reason like why we would start every day early morning so that no matter how many breaks we take throughout the day we would still reach to the destination where we have to be before sunset It is the points where you have to stay for one day at least. What do you have here? To, what do you have here? to, to so much going on. <laughs> 
to acclimatize uh, for the high altitude. Looks like this would be our accommodation for the next two days. So the plan was to stay in Manang for two nights because Manang is at a height of 3,500 meters. So we were told that if we stay one night in Manang, it will be good for us because then we get used to the altitude. So we were like, yeah, let's stay in Manang because it just looks so beautiful. So we were like, yeah, we'll stay one night and then, yeah, we'll do some filming and if, like we'll just explore. Some of the uh, cool spots and places just to take cool photos and stuff. And tomorrow we go much more higher. So, so Manang's altitude is 3,500 meters. But we, I think we're feeling good, and they give us this one day to acclimatize to the altitude. So I mean, it's good. So next morning, we are all charged up and we were like super excited to get on the track. It is day six and we are heading up to Chilicho Base Camp. getting so much height like so fast the walks were getting so hot and our steps were getting like just so slow it's literally 45 degrees steep <laughs> 10 steps and you, then you're dead good good <laughs> So it's our first stop for today, Siri Karka. It's on 4,075 meters. But if you're feeling good, so the plan is to drop half or we are feeling good. I'm glad that. So here's the thing: we have to stay in Siri Karka when we come back from the lake. So we are like, ah, oh, we'll just drop half of our stuff which we don't need during for the next two days, so that it'll be lighter for us. Oh my god, we have to go on these stairs. It's like straight uphill. At first, I think it's just you go downhill on the bridge and then go up, up, up. And the walk from City Karka to the base camp, it was not fun. Slow, slow. Keep us up close to the ground. The whole landscape changed. It was just dry lands with full of rocks. Everywhere it would say like landslide area. This is what we did from here to here, here, here then go up. And here we are, struggling, taking one small, small step. And then this happens. Oh my god. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I mean, this guy is crossing with a donkey. And he's literally like, he's not even going slow, he's going really fast. I go back with horse. 
Nah, that's more dangerous. Look. Holy oh, shit. Like it's like giving your life on a horse. We're taking a photo at this spot here. I think the walk for day four is almost over. That's our base camp. And tomorrow morning we go up there to the lakes. But anyways, after all this struggle, we finally reached to the base camp. So here was the thing. Next morning, we have to wake up super early so that when we go up there, you could see the sunrise if possible. How's everyone doing? Great. Surviving? <laughs> so, oh my god. So we've been walking for about, I don't know, an hour and a half. And I think still we have one hour. And the altitude what we have to cover is I think 900 meters. So fucking hell. Yeah. Well, the views are cool. We could see the uh, snow peaks little bit because it's like sun shining on that but then the cloud takes over and it's just so hard to talk so i'm gonna stop talking it was a hard walk because we literally had to cover like 900 meters in altitude within four kilometers which means that there would be so many points where you're just going up and up and up We're almost reaching 5,000 meters. It's getting like really hard to breathe. Almost there. We've been walking for about two hours and 15 minutes. Sun's coming up, so that's good. I think we're almost there. We could see the sign. 35 minutes, oh, 35 minutes, oh. I thought, I thought she said 35 meters and I got like so excited, oh 35 meters, we're almost there. But then it's like 35 minutes and those 35 minutes? Oh, it's says 35 minutes. That's good, it's just flat. Okay. Nice. The views are just getting better. Sky's clearing up. I think we're lucky. After the longest 35 minutes of my life, we finally reached the lake and it was just like... So, finally we reached at the lake and this is our first view.
So the lake was amazing and now we're going downhill again in this landslide area. This is a challenge, but the sun came out like it was really cold at the lake. It started drizzling, so we started rushing down. But we got good photos, we had good time, had good tea. And now back to the base camp. I think it would take around one and a half hours or so. And while we were heading back to the base camp, this thought came in my head. We had this option to head straight and finish our circuit trek without doing Lake Telicho. But it was just our curiosity which drove us there, that how cool it'll be to see the highest lake in the world with our own eyes. And I believe that curiosity, it can take us to places which we have never imagined. It makes us try things which we once thought that it'll be so stupid to do that. It helps us to explore things around us and sometimes within us.